Uh, hi everyone, uh, welcome to this uh, last week's lectures on the course on linear systems theory. Um, so, so far we have uh, done a bunch of things uh, starting from basics of linear algebra to look at uh, solutions to, uh, to systems of equations uh, both uh, time invariant, time varying, discrete time, continuous times and so on. We had a bunch of uh, tools to analyze the stability of linear time invariant systems or also and also linear time varying systems. Uh, one of the most powerful tool we used was uh, that of uh, Lyapunov stability. Uh, we did a bunch of things uh, for analysis of controllability, uh, what to do if the system is only partially controllable or only few states are controllable, uh, what if all the states are not, not measurable then we had the notion of observability. Uh, then we had uh, design problems where we had uh, problems relating to, de to designing controllers, to designing observers, simultaneous uh, design of controllers and observers. We also had uh, looked upon of reduced order observers and towards the end also looked at some uh, problems relating to optimal control when we have constraints on the control. Uh, energy or, or the control input where we also have constraints on the time and, and so on. Uh, so, what we will do now is to, is to just revisit those things and look at things a little more from a computational uh, point of view. So, let us start with, with uh, the one of the basic uh, equations that we had looked upon while we were interested in uh, instability of systems. So, that is the, the, the traditional uh, Lyapunov equation A transpose P. Uh, plus plus p a. So, here a is given to me, p is the unknown uh, and I can maybe, uh, so if, I, if you look at the last condition for Lyapunov stability, uh, we had a condition where something like this was equal to asymptotic and also exponential stability. Um, a was given to me, p was the unknown and if there exists a solution p which is symmetric and positive definite, then the system was asymptotically stable. And if you look at it closely, uh, so this equation is, is uh, linear in P. So, we are solving for the matrix P or the elements of the matrix P, okay, and there is an inequality and that uh, somehow motivates the name uh, linear uh, matrix uh, inequality. Okay. So, in general I can write uh, that, so, so I am solving uh, for this equation for P. Uh, in general, my P could be of the form A transpose P plus P A, again some B's and C's of this form and some Q where my objective is to find a P such that this entire expression F of P is, is, uh, is less than 0. Okay. Similarly, I have uh, the discrete time Lyap uh, Lyapunov matrix uh, or the Lyapunov matrix inequality. This was also a linear uh, matrix inequality. You can check that this is uh, also uh, like this. So, so, this inequality A transpose P A minus A being less than 0 was also uh, linear in, in, in P. Okay. So, the in general, uh, uh, so if, if I look at say a, a, a two dimensional system, so I was essentially solving for these three unknowns P 1 1, P 1 2 and P 2 2. Uh, when when I was looking at a solution to this equation. Right? So, in general I can write uh, LMI in its most standard form in terms of this unknowns P11, P12 and P22. So, here I call this this X i's are my unknowns uh, as a as so in general form I can write F of X is F naught plus uh, X1 F1 till X n F n less than 0 where uh, okay, so this should be F i where all these F i's uh, I going from 0 till n are known matrices. This x i's are unknown scalars like all these p's in this in this entries in this matrix are, are scalars and they are usually referred to as the uh, decision variables. And there is a little result which I will not prove in general, but I will give you a little example of that, that any uh, uh, general LMI can be uh, uh, can be converted. So, an LMI of, of, of uh, this form here can be converted into an LMI in, in, in the standard form. Okay. So, let us start with a matrix A which looks like this A11, A12, A21, A22. P is symmetric and has entries of the form P11, P12, 
P 1 2 and P 2 2. Okay. So, uh, I am just looking at how does this equality look like A or this inequality A transpose P plus uh, P times A is uh, less than 0. Uh, I just substitute into things, in, uh, so just plug in the values of A and P here and what I end up is uh, something like this. I have twice P 1 1 A 1 1 plus twice uh, P 1 2 A 2 1 and then because these are scalars I can always write A i j uh, P with uh, K L would be uh, equal to this one. Okay. So, and therefore, you will have these twos here. Uh, the second entry here would be P 1 2 A 1 1 plus A 1 2 plus P 2 2 A 2 1 plus P 1 1 a 1 2, uh, then you have uh, P 1 2, A 1 1 plus A 2 2 plus P 2 2, A 2 1 plus P 1 1, A 1 2, uh, this is twice P 1 2, A 1 2 is less than 0, can also be equivalently written in in this form. So, I have P 1 1 here, I have twice A 1 1, A 1 2, uh, A 1 2 0 plus P 1 2, I have twice A 2 1, A 2 2 plus A 1 1, A 2 2 plus A 1 1 here, twice A 1 2 plus uh, sorry, plus P 2 2 with uh, 0 A 2 1 A 2 1 twice A 2 2 is less than 0. Okay. So, this uh, I converted this LMI into what I call as a, as a standard form of the f in, in this unknown rest x 1 f 1 x 2 f 2 and x 3 f 3. So, this is uh, x 1 f 1 x 2 f 2 x 3 f 3 and then the f naught is, uh, is is 0. Okay. So, the, I will not do a general proof, but the general proof will, will follow some similar similar arguments. So, I am just keeping things a little little simple for, for the moment. Uh, okay. So, okay, what, is, what does it mean geometrically right when I write down an inequality of, of, of this form and okay, what am I actually searching for. Okay, so, let us do a little example and say I have uh, an LMI of this form uh, a naught plus a 1 x 1 with uh, a naught of this form a 1 and a 2 uh, and searching for a uh, with for a x being less than or e uh, less than 0 would be equal to these two conditions first 1 minus x 1 minus x 2 being less than 0 and second I am looking at the determinant right. So, uh, I just compute the determinant and it will uh, be something like this. Okay. So, uh, I am just looking at now the uh, uh, x 1 and x 2 which satisfies this relation plus this uh, relation which can together be written as a, as a relation of this form. Um, so, if I plot these two regions individually uh, this could be the, uh, the, so, so this, this double shaded region here would give me the feasible set of all points x 1 and x 2 that satisfy this inequality of uh, a x being less than 0. Okay. So, okay, this is easy to, to plot and check and th therefore, okay, so we will not spend spend much time on the solutions of, of this. I uh, will just leave this to you because they are uh, fairly uh, okay uh, looking equations here. Uh, uh, so, but what we will, uh, what the, the aim of this is to show that uh, just to give an illustration of what, what I am actually, uh, actually uh, looking for. So, I am just looking for solutions of this which just look uh, as this uh, uh, as a region uh, given by this one. Okay. So, uh, what if things are not LMIs? What is not an LMI? Right. So, I know I gave you a general form of LMI, uh, but what is not an LMI? So, we will start with uh, the standard LTI system with a control input where the objective is to design a feedback control law u equal to kx. Okay, I am just doing a little uh, abuse of notation here 
where traditionally we would use u equal to minus kx, but okay, just for some, some ease of notation, uh, I am just using u equal to plus kx, but no, nothing really changes in this, right. So, uh, not that what I to, taught you earlier was different than now, I am just, just, uh, just omitting that minus for some, some convenience of notation here. Okay, so, my objective here is to uh, design a feedback control law such as a closed loop system given by x dot equal to a plus b x, uh, a plus b k times x is asymptotically stable. Okay, what does Lyapunov uh, theory tell me that this problem has a solution if and only if there exists uh, a positive definite p uh, and of course, a k uh, such that uh, this entire expression or this inequality holds that a plus b k transpose p plus p times a plus b k is, is less than 0. Okay, so, if you see that okay, I have two unknowns here uh, p and k. Uh, so, uh, so, this is not, 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 a, not an LMI because I have two unknowns here and they are not linear in, in, in P and K. Okay, so, there is this, this, this cross term here. Okay, so, what do I do uh, with, with equations like this? Okay, first step that I will do is, okay, let me just take, uh, introduce another variable Kx as P inverse and just substituting here and doing some manipulations, I, I, get, a, uh, I get an expression like this. Okay, this is also not an LMI. Okay, so, uh, what do we do under uh, uh, in situations like this? Okay, so, uh, I can expand that uh, this inequality to write as the following A x, x a transpose, b k x, x k transpose, b transpose. So, so the unknowns again are my x and the unknown is k, k and because of this cross terms, the linearity is lost. Okay, I can do a little trick here, right. So, I just do a little change of variables uh, and I, I introduce a new unknown x simply as k times x. Okay. So, once I do this, this k times x becomes n, this becomes n transpose and I have a solution. So, what I have to solve for now, I have to find an x which is greater than 0, okay, because p is greater than 0, p inverse will also be greater than 0 and therefore, x will also be greater than 0. So, is that a x plus x a transpose b n n transpose uh, b transpose is less than 0. Now, I, uh, so this is an LMI now, right. So, this is linear in, in x and n. So, if I find x from this, if I find n for this, to me to find k is easy, right, from this. So, k will simply be, uh, uh, okay. So, k will simply be, okay, this is a little typo here. Since n equal to k times x, k will simply be n x uh, inverse. Okay. So, so that is that is a nice trick here, right. We just uh, uh, introduce a new variable n as k times x, I solve for n, I solve for x and I can e easily realize what my what my k is. Okay. So, now let us see what happens in the discrete time case. So, if I go to discrete time case, I have a system that x k plus 1 is a x k plus b u k, where the objective again is to design a control law u k is k times x k such that the closed loop system is asymptotically stable. Again, I just drop the minus here for, for some obvious reasons. Now, again, without loss of any generality. Okay. Now, uh, from the Lyapunov stability theory, uh, what I know that this problem has a solution if and only if there exists a symmetric and positive definite P such that uh, this inequality holds. And again, this is not, uh, not, not again an LMI because I have this, this cross terms here. Okay. So, not only that, uh, if I just and this should be easy to verify that I, uh, if I just do a change of variables, uh, that trick may not may not uh, work here directly. So I may have to uh, to uh, to look at look at some other tools that will help me solve uh, problems of, of this kind. Okay, so let's uh, take a little little break uh, from LMIs. Let's uh, go back to matrix theory and see if there are some tools that matrix theory teaches us. Um, in, in such that we can uh, arrive at solutions to this or at least formulate them as LMIs. Okay. So, one of the very powerful result uh, in, in, in matrix theory uh, is the Schur complement. So, let us say I start with a matrix A and I partition it uh, in, in this way A11, A12, A21, A22 uh, and when assume that A11 is non-singular, then a22 minus A21, A11 times A, A11 inverse time A22. So, this entire expression is called the Schur complement of A11 in A, denoted by this, this short notation. Similarly, when A22 is non singular, then A11 minus A12, A22 inverse, okay, so A21 
is called the Schur complement of A22 in A and is denoted uh, in a compact way as the Schur of A22. Okay, so what does this uh, this do to us? Okay, so so some results before we do this uh, uh, or some definitions before we go further. Uh, two matrices. Okay, I'm not really dealing with square matrices. Uh, uh, so A and B are called equivalent. If I can write B as some Q inverse A P for some immutable matrices P and Q of, of appropriate dimensions. Uh, slightly different than what I do in the similarity transformations because there the underlying assumption is that the matrix, matrix is a square matrix. So, P inverse AP will give me an A bar and so on. Here it is a little more general way of, uh, of looking at things. Okay, so, this is uh, good. Uh, okay, so, what happens in this case? So, when A11 is non-singular, then the matrix A is equivalent to the following matrix. Okay? Uh, and this implies that A is non-singular if and only if the sure of A11 is non-singular and the determinant of A is just a determinant of this guy plus a determinant of this guy. Okay, so, I have A, I say that this is this A is uh, in a way equivalent to this matrix. Okay, so, I have A 1 1 0 0 A 2 2 minus A 2 1 A 1 1 inverse A 1 2. This is also called as the shear of A 1 1. Okay. And what uh, the result says is that A being non singular that is equivalent to saying so this is possible if and only if the shear of A 1 1 is non singular. Okay. Now, let us uh, do this. So, uh, so when A 1 1 is non singular that is that's, that's the condition right. So, this is uh, for, uh, necessary for, for this uh, sure to exist. When A 1 1 is non singular okay, let us define these two matrices T 1 which is identity 0 minus A 2 1 a 1 1 inverse the identity. Similarly, T 2 as the identity minus A 1 1 inverse A 1 2 0 and also an identity here and find and say that A can be obtained as T 1 A Right, where A is now partitioned like this, right? So that was the, the condition. A is partitioned as A11, A12, A21, A22, T1 times A times T2. So I just substitute for all of this and I just get uh, the following. A11, 0, I will uh, skip the steps. Uh, A22 minus A21. A 1 1 inverse A 1 2. Okay, this is the shear of A 1 1. Okay. <coughs> so, so uh, what does the result say or what does the theorem statement say that uh, A is non-singular if and only if the shear of A 1 1 is non-singular and additionally determinant of A is just given by the determinant of A 1 1 times the determinant of the shear of A 1 1. Okay. So, the second uh, uh, so, 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 this shows the, uh, the equi equivalence of, of uh, uh, A 1 1 sorry of A being equivalent to this matrix okay. which means that uh, A is singular if and only if uh, sure of A 1 1. So, A sorry A is non singular if and only if the sure of A 1 1 is non singular right. So, A 1 1 being singular is any western necessary condition. Right. Okay. And now look at uh, what do I do with the with the determinants. Okay. So what we had to prove was the determinant of A was the determinant of A11 times the determinant 
of the sure of A11. Okay, so, if I look at uh, this, this expression here, what do I have is it is easy to check that the determinant of T1 is 1 and also the determinant of T2 is 1. Okay, and therefore, this is this is now, uh, now kind of uh, trivial to check. Okay, good. Uh, now, what happens when the uh, when the matrices are are symmetric? Yeah, so we will uh, so through through the course we were interested in in symmetric P's and so on. Okay, so what happens when the matrices are symmetric? So let let me say that the matrix is partitioned in the following way: I have A11, A12. A12 transpose and 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 A22 here, which is that that A is A transpose. Okay, then the result says that if A is less than zero, this implies that A11 is less than zero and the sure of A11 is less than zero. And similarly, A22, and this also implies that A22 is less than zero and the sure of A22 is less than zero. Okay, I, mean I can uh, write exactly the same results by replacing this with this, 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 and so on. Okay, and similarly here. Okay, so I think the proof uh, should be uh, should be a kind of uh, easy because when uh, the matrix A is symmetric, then the previous transformations are such that T1 transpose is T2. Okay, and once once uh, okay once we establish this, then the results are, are are like easy easy to check. Okay, and in general, now this is also a, a straightforward consequence is uh, is the following that uh, okay I skip the proofs, but it's it's easy uh, or it's important to know these results that if A is uh, has has blocks which are you know, of this way, so A11, A12, A12 transpose, A1R, A1R transpose, and so on, such that again A is A transpose. Then A less than zero implies that each of these entries are zero: A11, A22, all the way till A R R R uh, are less than zero. Okay, so I'll do I'll do maybe a very short short proof of this and, and skip the longer one. So let's take a simple case of R being equal to two. Okay, so uh, well then A less than zero. It's obvious to say that A one one is less than zero, which also means that A one one inverse is less than zero, and a12 transpose a11 inverse a12 less than 0 okay so uh, now applying sure complement applying sure complement lemma which was essentially this one, right? The, what we had here, where a less than zero implied a11 less than zero, and the sure of a11 less than zero. Similarly, a22 less than zero, uh, and and this. Okay. So the sure of a11, which is a22 minus a12 transpose a11 inverse a12 less than zero. This implies that A22 is less than A12 transpose A11 inverse A12. Okay, and what do I know from the from the sure complement lemma or all this? So I just, then I just have this one. So from this condition, I just also have that A22 is less than zero, right? So uh, these two are true. A11 less than zero and A22 less than zero. Right, so a less than zero implies uh, these two conditions. Okay, for for r, it's it's okay. Maybe there'll be a couple of more steps to for, for r greater than two. There'll be a couple of more steps, but I'll just skip those things. But this is uh, good for a little understanding of what what the result actually is trying to say. Okay, right. So uh, what do we do uh, this uh, with with this sure complement? Okay, so uh, start with again the discrete time system uh, x k one. Uh, x k plus one is a x k plus b u k. Uh, 
the system with u equal to 0 is, is sure stable if and only if there exists again p equal to p transpose greater than 0 such that any one of the following LMI is hold right. So, p is greater than 0 uh, a transpose p plus p a okay this should be less than 0 and okay and these two uh, these two inequalities okay uh, so this is again a uh, very straightforward consequence of uh, of uh, applying sure complement and then i will skip this steps but we'll go to the more interesting ones uh, uh, interesting ones where what about the case of discrete time stabilization problems where uh, we said i cannot use a change of variables i can also uh, to it was it was not an lmi in the continuous time case, we could use a change of variables to arrive at a, at a nice looking LMI which was solvable, whereas in the discrete time case, that was not possible. So, what what, what does what happens to the case of discrete time uh, systems here? Okay, so uh, so this is not an LMI. Okay, and let's say what does the sure complement does to me, uh, do to me? Okay, so first is applying uh, the sure complement to the discrete time Lyapunov equation. We first arrive at uh, at this expression. Okay, and then uh, okay, this is still non-linear because I have a p inverse. Okay, now next what I do is okay, I uh, add, uh, I multiply to the left and right by this matrix p inverse times i, and set q as p inverse. I obtain something like this. I have q's here. I have q a transpose, and some okay, this q is also q and k both are unknown, so I have some cross terms here. Okay, but I can do some other trick. I can just do, I can set another. I can call n as k times q, and then rewrite all these terms here like this. Okay, now this is this is uh, can be easily verified uh, to be uh, to be an LMI. Okay, so so. Uh, by making use of the sure complement, I could convert the discrete time stabilization problem with unknowns k and p to a nice looking LMI. Okay, again, I can just uh, sol solving for q and n, I can find out what is also the k in this case. Okay, so, uh, one more example, it is not necessarily for stabilization problems, we could also uh, have uh, well, some complex looking LMIs which can be simplified via sure complement. So, uh, if I give you this thing to solve, okay, so uh, I have uh, this one, right. So, 1, 0, x 1, 0, 1, x 2, x 2, x 2, 1 and I have to solve this for being greater than 0. Okay, I can write it in the standard LMI of the form. So, I have 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, okay, plus and I write it in terms of uh, x 1. So, it will be x 1 times uh, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, plus x 2 times 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0 to be greater than 0. So, we still have uh, f naught plus x 1 times f 1, x 2 times f 2 is greater than 0. Okay, and then we uh, go about computing the feasible set geometrically or, or even analytically. But what we see here is if I uh, just apply the sure complement to this block here, I just partition my A matrix this way. And if I apply, so this is invertible, right? So if I apply the sure complement to this block here, what I get is, uh, is something something very nice looking here, right? So an equivalent condition for this LMI is something like this. Okay, so this is equivalently written uh, in in the following form. So I have a solution one minus x one square minus plus x two square is greater than zero should be a greater than 0 there. Okay. And, and therefore, uh, we have a condition that x 1 square plus x 2 square is less than 1. Okay. And then if I just plot that region, I just get that the feasible region of this LMI is all this uh, circle of uh, all, all the points within uh, the within the unit circle in the x 1 
and x2 plane okay so so that brings us to the conclusion of part 1 of this lecture where we had uh, introduced lmis or or the lyapunov solution problem as some uh, lmi formulation including the stabilization uh, of of uh, continuous and discrete time systems uh, we saw how via sure complements we can translate a difficult looking LMIs or even nonlinear matrix inequalities into LMIs. So, next time we will just, I uh, will just teach you some MATLAB tools to solve this LMIs and in general some examples of uh, formulation of, of LMIs uh, of, of uh, systems that we, we, we are uh, more likely to encounter in, in real life. Uh, so, that is uh, coming up in the next two lectures. Uh, thanks for listening.